it's a pretty lousy weather out here. Uh, I think we got the tail end of a hurricane from America coming in, but it's pretty bad. But I've got some ingredients. Let me show you what I got. Woo! So, what have I got in the bag? Well, we've been shopping. Um, weather's awful outside, really bad. Absolutely chucking it down. Um, we're going to make um, a jambalaya. So I've been out to buy some ingredients, um, some vegetables, some chicken, and some chorizo sausage. Let me just go and get myself dried up. I'll be back to show you this recipe. Right, so we're dried off uh, and we're, we're ready to go. Okay, jambalaya, um, Louisiana, stuff like that, gumbo soup. It comes from that kind of uh, area of, of cooking, okay? Um, I'm not an expert on it, but I've looked into it and we're gonna have a, a, a crack at it today. So in the bag, um, we've got um, our, our ingredients that we bought earlier. So what did we buy? Well, let me start off by saying, in jambalaya, there's 20 plus ingredients, because it's quite a complicated uh, recipe. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get seven of those ingredients and we're gonna stick them all into one. All right, so it's gonna make the whole job a lot easier um, to understand and a lot easier for anybody that, that's not that confident to, to get this bang, to get it right straight away. Okay, so we'll show you what ingredients we've got and then we'll get them prepped. We've got some spring onions. We've got a few stalks of uh, celery. And we've got some red, green and yellow peppers. And to be honest, we're probably only gonna use the green and the yellow pepper in this because we're gonna get our red um, color from um, a tin of chopped tomatoes. So the meat that we're going to use um, in this jambalaya is going to be chicken and chorizo sausage. Um, people put, put, I mean, uh, traditionally it's got seafood as well, so we're looking at prawns, shrimps um, in it as well, but uh, it's no secret, I don't like seafood and I'm not going to use it, but I'll go through where and how you add that. Um, later on in the recipe. So, first of all, um, we have got our chorizo sausage in the fridge and we're going to use about two chicken breasts um, and we're going to slice them up and season them. So I'll go through this with you now and then we can concentrate on prepping our veg. So first thing we're going to do um, is we are going to prep our two chickens and we're going to, you can do it any way you want really, um, you can dice them, you can make them into strips, probably going to make mine into strips um, just to add a bit of a, a better look to the finished dish. So we're going to get ourselves two chicken breasts out there and remember to have a bowl of warm water or the sink of hand to wash your hands and get that chicken off. <laughs> And then get ourselves a couple of containers, chop these bad boys up. Start off by cleaning your chickens, make sure there's no bits on there. And like I said, just going to do nice thin strips. Once your chicken's um, all cut, um, got it into the container, go give your hands a good wash, your board and your knife ready to cut the rest of your ingredients. So as you can see, we've got about 450 grams there of um, chopped up chicken. And over here, we've got around about 300 grams of chorizo sausage, which we're gonna chop up into slices. You can do this a number of ways. You can just do them into rounds, or you can do them into to longer sort of um, strips, if you like. 
might just do a mixture of both. So once you've got your sausage cutter, we're just going to throw those little monkeys straight in with the chickens and mix them all together. And then with that chicken and turtle sausage all mixed up, we've got ourselves some Cajun um, spice mix. You can buy this anywhere. It's ready-made stuff. You can make it yourself um, if you want to go to that effort, but I'm not going to go to that effort. So two tablespoons, roughly about 30 grams of Cajun spice. Mix it all together. Get that all into there. Doesn't matter if you go over a little bit. Get yourself a spoon and mix it all together. There we are. Get it all mixed up. Um, you know, that already smells pretty good. If you want, you can get yourself a splash of olive oil and just drizzle a little bit of that in there. Just to add a little bit of liquid to it. It's going to help it marinate. There we are, we can set this aside for use later. So while your chorizo and chicken are marinating in the season, um, occasion seasoning, what we're going to do is we're going to prep up our vegetables. Now we've got some peppers, we've got some celery and I've got some spring onions. What we're going to do is we're going to prep them up um, and I'm only going to use a yellow and a green pepper. As you can see, you don't have to be too fussy uh, with this, okay? We just get that all mixed into a bowl, pop that aside, clean our mess up, then we're ready to start cooking a jambalaya. So, with our um, chicken, chorizo, and our vegetables all cut up, like I said earlier, this recipe's got a lot of ingredients and it can get pretty complicated. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take seven of those ingredients and we're going to combine them into one mix effectively a jambalaya spice mix if you like um, so we've got the ingredients here and we're going to get them all into a pot because at the end of the day they all get incorporated around about at the same time in the cooking process so throw them in one by one by one at different points in the cooking process absolutely pointless and it just confuses the situation so what we'll do like i said we'll make a spice mix and then we'll start cooking our jambalaya so let's get one teaspoon of salt into this pot. Doesn't have to be too accurate. We're going to get a quarter of a teaspoon of black pepper. And what we'll do is I'll pop the ingredients, um, these seven ingredients, up on the screen now for you just to have a look at what we're going while we're combining them. One teaspoon of dried thyme. One teaspoon of oregano. Quarter of a teaspoon of chili flakes. Quarter of a teaspoon of chilli powder. And lastly, two teaspoons of plain flour. Be careful with these chilli flakes, they really are hot, okay? Um, so start with quarter of a teaspoon. You can always add a few more later if, uh, if it's not as hot as you like. Okay? But do be careful with these bad boys. They will blow your head off.
and then we can just pop a lid onto that container give it a shake it's that easy <laughs> So first thing we're going to do, we've got our pan, um, we've got a cast iron um, casserole dish here um, or a dutch oven if you like, a flat one and that we're going to make our jambalaya in. So what we're going to need is around about 30 millilitres of oil, olive oil or any kind of oil you want to cook it in, olive oil into the pan, get the heat up on that. Turn the heat down now to a nice, um, a low heat, just to get that oil nice and hot. So we go and grab our chicken and our to cook them off. Now get that oil nice and hot, stir it all around the pan. You can smell it, you can smell it cooking. What we're going to do is we're going to throw these bad boys straight into this pan. Okay, this should take about five minutes or so to cook and what you're looking for you're going to get a really nice aromatic smell coming out of this and you want the chickens then to be sealed going slightly brown so as you, as you can see our chicken and our sausage have been cooking here for about five minutes or so and um yeah they're pretty much sealed in the chickens almost cooked so it's time to get ourselves a slotted spoon and then we're going to pop this chicken and sausage back into the container there we are so we leave that set aside um, for a few minutes now while we're going to cook our vegetables in the same pan, we've just taken our chicken and chili to out. Again, this will probably just take a few minutes, five minutes or so, to get these vegetables nice and soft. Get them all in. On top of those vegetables, I'm going to put in two teaspoons of lazy garlic. Um, you can use crushed garlic cloves if you like, but as you know, if you've watched my stuff before, I like to use lazy garlic. Oh, I can smell that. So while those vegetables are cooking, uh, like I said, probably take about 5-6 minutes or so, we're going to need to measure out about 190 grams of uncooked plain rice okay, you can use long grain rice you can use basmati rice any kind of rice you like really but 190 grams of it okay and on top of that rice uh, we're going to get ourselves three chicken stock cubes and make up 300 milliliters of chicken stock There we are, with our stock made up, mixed together, our vegetables are pretty much cooked. What we're going to do is we are going to add in the spice mix that we made up earlier on. Just get that all mixed in to your vegetables and let that cook for another few minutes. To let all of those flavours of the spices, the oregano, the thyme, let all that infuse into that pan. Smells pretty good. And then pretty much the last things that we need to add into this, then we're going to pop in our tin of chopped tomatoes. 
about 20 millilitres of Worcester sauce and our chicken stock and then we can cook and throw our uh, chicken and chorizo back in. Bit of heat up a little bit on that. About 20 millilitres of uh, Worcester sauce. About four teaspoons. All of our chicken stock, that can go straight in. Now we've got the heat up, it's starting to bubble away. And now we've got enough fluid in this pan to be able to add our 190 grams of uncooked white rice. That's going to fill it out a little bit. And lastly, we'll throw in our cooked chicken and chorizo. Get all that mixture back in there. And get this all combined and mixed up. So this all evenly spread around the pan. And then we just need to cover it and leave it cooked on that low simmer for about 25-30 minutes. Um, if you were going to add seafood to this, um, so prawn, shrimps, um, whatever you want to call it, you would add that probably the last sort of 10-15 minutes of cooking. Okay, get them into the uh, jambalaya mix them all around and get them cooking as well so they're fully cooked obviously um, before you serve this but what you want to do is keep taking the lid off this every sort of twice two or three times ten minutes give it a bit of a stir make sure it's not sticking to the bottom of the pan oh it smells lovely <laughs> So all that's really left to do with this is to garnish it with your spring onion and then you can serve it up and you don't need to serve this with anything. It's got everything you need in it. It's got your meats, it's got your carbohydrates, it's got your rice, it's got your vegetables. It's a one pot meal and it's got a bit of a kick.